bloody bastards. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day! I know I've been long overdue on my new update, so let's do it right now. But before I do that, I wanted to thank you so much for all your subscribes and views. Even though I know many of you are subscribing for different reasons than I would wanted you to. Closing in on 14,000 subscribers, soon 15,000, which is amazing. So thank you for that. And without further ado, let me uh, walk you around the house and show you the current stage. I'm freezing in here, that's why I'm wearing my cap, so please allow me to wear my cap so I don't freeze to death. After I walk you through down here, I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna record what I've been through since my last update, since the last tape update. I wanna tell you all about uh, what I've been up to for the past month. So. So this is the current stage, this is uh, what it looks like currently. It all been sanded, I finished all the drywall and I started working on uh, preparing the floor uh, for uh, the radiant heating pipes. So what you see here right now is reflective foil and on top of it uh, goes the, the pipes and below it is the insulation and right here in this master bathroom I already started laying down some of the piping. This is the main manifold and from this manifold uh, the pipes are distributed to all the rooms. Uh, kitchen back there, living room, bathroom, this is the master bedroom uh, and the hallway. The way it works, the PEX pipe actually like spirals around the room, swirls around and then comes back to the manifold and it, it feeds the hot water into the floor and this is this is gonna be all covered up with uh, a concrete the radiant heat from the floor warms up all the rooms and you don't have the need for uh, additional radiators and here it, it wouldn't even be possible to have a radiator because on the on the first floor i have the doors everywhere i don't have actual windows down here all these openings are doors and as you can see the heat very good heat and energy efficient heat is really needed in this uh, part of the world because sometimes the winters get really cold. I mean, the winters lately been uh, gradually getting milder and milder, but uh, this year the winter is extremely cold. What I've heard on the news that the winter has been uh, the coldest in the past 10 years. So like this is like really special situation. During this coldest winter in 10 years, I actually been forced to move to this house because the hostel that I've been staying at uh, went out of business. I, I figured, you know, for many different reasons, I'm, I'm gonna explain later. I decided to move in this house even though I don't have uh, a heat, I don't have running water. I'm gonna move in here so I don't have to hassle, you know, uh, staying at uh, different kinds of uh, hostels and dealing with, you know, different people during these uh, COVID times. So I decided, even though it's not the most comfortable setting for me, I decided to move in here. So let me go upstairs and show you uh, my room where I'm temporarily staying at, where I'll be uh, eventually recording the part three uh, video of the uh, Mexican border crossing. I'm planning on doing it, but as you can see, I'm, I'm super busy right now and I don't really have time to work on that video because it's a uh, lot of editing. I need to go through like really vast library of uh, videos and pictures and stuff. I really need time and focus to finish that video. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm posting these updates and tell you a little bit about what I'm going through right now. So let me show you my path. So this is my bathroom right here I'm using right now. And because I don't have running water, uh, I'm using water from uh, the gutters. Well, there's not much rain right now, but I still had some uh, uh, water from before and I'm using that water for flushing the toilet. And, and my pad is right here. So this is my room right now. I have a little heater warming up in this room. And that's why I'm currently chilling right now. I got I got all I need here. I got uh, the hot water kettle, 
I got you know some supplies, uh, groceries. I got my computer. I got my bed. All the furniture I got here has been donated to me. Uh, one of my neighbors, really a good friend, really nice fella, and he brought me uh, the furniture from his work. They've been getting rid of uh, old furniture, so he, he brought me the bed, the desk, the table, and the chairs, and I got everything I need to basically survive the winter here or to su survive here until I sell this place. So I just got back from uh, taking a shower at the gas station and from the laundry, laundromat. So I'm all clean right now, I don't stink and I'm ready to record voiceover for this update. Let's do it. So obviously because of all the COVID restrictions, I haven't seen the barber for, for a long time. So my hair is going all crazy and my beard is uh, overgrown, but it's just fine. Once the restrictions uh, get eased, you know, I'm gonna take care of my uh, appearance. But anyway, so the reasons I actually moved temporarily into my house, the hostel I've been staying at, went out of business, they didn't have enough people staying there and they couldn't keep up with the expenses, I guess. So they told us just to move out. Uh, staying at the hostel was for me like really comfortable because I didn't have to worry about anything else but just, you know, sleep in there. My room got cleaned uh, by the janitor. I had washing machine available. I had a kitchenette, I had a shower. I had uh, free Wi-Fi and most importantly I had a secure sort of uh, secure parking because I was parking my car right at front of the reception so so the receptionist uh, could see you know through the window if there's any activity at night if someone was trying to break into my car I'm really anxious about being robbed again because previously my house uh, been broken into and lots of goods been stolen from my house. By the way, I just recently went to the local police station and they actually caught the burglar who uh, broke into my house. Uh, they actually caught him through the DNA profile they got from one of my doors. So that's, that's sort of good news that the bad guy got caught. He's been prosecuted while uh, he's locked up, so he's He's currently locked up in jail for another crime. That's how this guy is making a living. He's going uh, from construction site to construction site and he's stealing material and tools from all those unprotected uh, construction sites. And not a very many people has uh, cameras at those sites so most of the time he gets away with it. But in my case, he left the DNA uh, trace. He got uh, caught for for this of course i'm never gonna see my my goods that's been stolen but at least there's a little bit of justice of course he's never gonna reimburse it to me but i'm gonna cause the guy you know as much problems as i can S since he already got lots of problems and his life is pretty much uh, fucked up i'm, I'm just gonna add uh, another fire log to it and you know one of the reasons that i moved here is the constant fear of being uh, robbed either my car being broken into or my house being broken into again i didn't move to another ho hostel because i wouldn't have a secure parking anymore and because my my house been broken into i was keeping all my tools my expensive uh, uh, battery power dewalt uh, tools i i've been keeping in my car i wouldn't be able to sleep because i would fear every night that my car is going to be uh, broken into and my tools that i need every day are going to be stolen and i can't really afford you know purchasing new tools because like my budget is like really limited i just can't afford these losses so this is the main reason that i moved in this house is the fear of being uh robbed again so not only i don't need to keep my stuff in my car anymore i keep it in the house and i'm staying at the house so i'm actually guarding my house as well uh i killed two birds at one take plus i have about six 
security cameras mounted around the house, located around the house. My cameras are monitoring the surroundings and inside the house. Even though I'm, I'm staying here, I, I still have those cameras running. So this is the main reason I moved here. And because I don't have running water here, I'm limited to taking shower uh, at the gas station. So I decided the hell with it. I'm just gonna go once a week to the gas station and get a, a hot shower. Ironically, today the gas station was out of hot water and i had a cold shower anyway so and as for my laundry i just look at a coin laundry fortunately there is a couple of them and they are open for business so i was able to uh, wash my clothes let me go ahead and tell you about all i've been through uh, for the past month don't mind the noise of the uh, of the heater hopefully it's not gonna cause too much too much distortion in in the audio i'm just gonna talk while it's on uh, because it would disrupt my flow and i would forget what i wanted to say so since the last update i finished all the plastering the main problem with finishing the plastering was that i actually ran out the super finish uh, compound the supply stores were out of it all the supply stores were out of it and I didn't want to uh, keep waiting until they ordered and delivered it so I was forced to purchase different uh, compound and I was wondering uh, you know once I'm finished uh, uh, plastering uh, what's the sanding gonna be if it's if it's gonna sand different and of course uh, the new compound I got was uh, sanding differently than the previous one and it caused me like little trouble because the the new compound i got was a lot softer been sanding a lot faster in a matter of second the the coat was gone and the sanding machine the sandpaper uh, kept leaving those uh, swirling marks on it even though i was using the 180 grit it still was leaving those scratch marks on it the, the super finish compound from knauf is the best that you can buy for the finish coat and sanding i mean i can do such seamless and smooth and flat surface like there is literally no transitions noticeable and with this new compound i have some transitions that i still need to repair just because of this so the the sanding didn't go as well as i wanted it to but i got it sort of done and i'm gonna take care of some of the transitions after i i prime the walls and i'm gonna clearly see where i have uh, the transitions the dips or whatever i'm gonna replaster and resand it after i prime the walls so right after uh, finishing the sanding i cleaned up everything and I've got rid of the white dust. I've been using the sander without the vacuum. I tried to use it uh, the first time I, I started uh, sanding upstairs. I tried to use that sander with the vacuum hose attached to it, but it got all clogged up after you know a very short time. And I ended up you know cleaning the vacuum. I ended up cleaning everything. It was slowing me down so much that I decided to just disconnect the hose. When you're sanding, you are already dealing with one quart and when you have the uh, vacuum cleaner attached you have additional hose that you need to uh, deal with and you have additional power cord to that vacuum cleaner and you basically need to uh, keep dragging the vacuum cleaner with you all the time it's really not comfortable to be dealing with all that clatter so i disconnected everything got rid of it and of course when, when you disconnect uh, everything and you are not sucking the dust directly from the head of the sander the white dust goes everywhere so once you start sanding the room gets filled with the white fog and you don't see shit i've been using my flashlight point the light from the side so i can see where the wall still needs to get sanded so so i've been going like really uh, inch by inch and inspecting the, the surface with the flashlight to see uh, if I got it uh, if I got it sanded properly so after finishing the sander I cleaned up all the white shit I jumped straight into finishing this, uh, the surrounds around all the doors for that purpose I used uh, particle boards because I wanted to put wood on those surrounds 
for better durability than the sheetrock. Originally I wanted to use plywood but the plywood is like three times more expensive than the particle board and once once it gets painted you can't tell the difference. So I, I opted for using the particle boards and it's still gonna get trimmed around the corners. So this is gonna be more durable than just the sheetrock or the sheetrock beads, the aluminum beads are really sensitive to banging and when you're walking through the doors you know you you carrying stuff with you you got keys suitcases bike stroller whatever and the corners get banged up so i decided you know i'm gonna use wood for this wood trim so it's more durable and better fixable when it gets banged up so i finished uh, all the surrounds and i jumped straight to uh preparing the floors so uh, i needed to start preparing uh, the surface for moisture barrier so i primed all the concrete cleaned it up primed it and then uh, started welding uh, the asphalt sheets on it i I used mask and I had all my doors open to, to reduce the fumes but I still think I inhaled some of the fumes my mask is not really sealed around my face because I have all this beard but anyway I was trying to knock it out as fast as I could so I welded the asphalt cheese I made sure that all the seams are all uh, watertight and the moisture barrier should be now all tight and the house should be now all dry no more moisture seeping through the uh, floor from the basement because the basement is all wet and I had to take care of uh, the moisture in the house so before I had you know the steel plates jacked in the walls to stop the uh, moisture percolating up the walls and this uh, asphalt sheet barrier should stop the water from percolating inside the house so so the top of the house should be now totally dry you know totally separated with the uh, moisture barrier from the basement so right after i finished uh, the moisture barrier i started preparing for the floor insulation for the floor insulation I'm using the 10 centimeter uh, thick styrofoam blocks and below this, these styrofoam blocks I applied a separating plastic sheet so the styrofoam doesn't deteriorate from the chemicals that are in the asphalt. The asphalt chemicals actually eat up the styrofoam so you need to separate separate it from the asphalt so this job was kind of tricky because I still needed to even out the floor uh, with the styrofoam because uh, the concrete wasn't uh, perfectly level uh, at some points uh, there are high points and low points the difference is not not a whole lot maybe a half inch three quarter inch and on top of that I have high differences because of the overlapping asphalt sheets so using the styrofoam I need to uh, perfectly level the floor for the concrete that goes on top of it so I have even layer of uh, about two inches of concrete goes on top of it so I needed to have a perfect uh, perfect level floor so because I, I didn't have hot wire saw available yet I've been using just a uh, regular uh, wood planer for trimming the styrofoam blocks from the bottom so I was using the planer to create so sort of uh, grooves on, on the bottom of the styrofoam to accommodate those uh, asphalt sheeting seams that are a little bit elevated and I was also using the planer to trim the entire block you know half inch down and of course this this trimming was creating lots of uh, lots of mess lots of uh, styrofoam beads I had the, the beads all over myself all over the place piles and piles of beads and because of the static electricity uh, those beads you know just stay on you and you can't just get rid of it and it's like real pain in the ass but eventually I went through the entire house I took care of all the unevenness and after five days uh, the floor was uh, completely flat completely level I hope it's good because I'm not pulling it out
let's use the deal. So after I finished uh, installing the insulation, I installed this uh, reflective foil so the heat from the radiant pipes doesn't go into the insulation but into the concrete and into the room. So I installed the sheeting and now, just yesterday, I started rolling down those PEX pipes. I started uh, with the most difficult uh, room, uh, the master bathroom, and I needed to go with the pipe uh, around the bathtub and around the shower. So it's kind of zigzagging uh, all over the place, but I figured it out how to get back with the pipe to the uh, main manifold. So next week I'll continue with installing the radiant uh, heating pipes. So I finish the entire house and get it ready for the concrete. I already have the concrete pour scheduled for March uh, 5th I think March March 4th or 5th so uh, I need to have it all ready by then uh, it shouldn't be a problem it shouldn't take me longer than maybe another five days to finish all the rooms so this is it for today's update I know you all have been waiting for it for a long time so uh, I'm glad I, I was finally able to catch up with my current developments. Uh, renovating this house is just a uh, part of my journey. Eventually this is gonna be all over, the house is gonna get all finished. I'm still trying to figure out where my place is on this YouTube time machine platform that's being flooded with beggars, begging for subscribers, begging for money across different platforms, not actually creating any real values. Where do I fit in? Who do I represent? I'm just a man with a plan documenting my journey. I represent hardworking individuals just like you, who honors true values, who is not begging for anything. However, currently my YouTube channel is earning only about six to seven dollars a day, which is my only income at this time. So if you happen to like my content and you'd like to help me out with my daily expenses that keep eating up from my budget, I desperately need for finishing this project house. I just wanted to remind you that my ebook about my crazy story how I scammed Walmart stores for money taking advantage of a poor return policy is still available for purchase on Amazon or you could hit my Patreon page. You will find the links in the description. Your help would be much appreciated. Subscribe if you'd like to follow my journey wherever it takes me and if you'd like to learn more about my past what I've been through, how I got into house flipping business, and how I got here where I'm at right now. I'll be covering all that in my future videos. So thank you all for watching, keeping up, and stay tuned for my next update. Peace.